welcome back to Crossbeats Production. You're here with Nate to Ape, and this is just another beat making tutorial. I just wanted to bring you a a really cool, unique kind of tip. I guess it's not so unique, but you know, when you when you're looking for samples and you want to sample your own music, and you really don't want to have the whole issue with you know sample clearance and all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, there's certain things you can do to make your samples or your own, you know, you can sample your own stuff basically, what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. So what I did in this particular track, which I've just started this track and I just figured, you know, since I'm in the midst of doing this beat um, and this is the idea that I came up with for this particular beat, which was really an idea from another song that I had heard, um, the, the track that I, I started to create was like a sampled Rhodes piano. So... I really wanted that authentic, you know, the old record player sort of sound that comes with, you know, record players and the old, you know, 80s or even from the 60s, you know, whenever they created the record, pretty much from then till when they've sort of less, there's less use now, basically. But, um, you know, I wanted to create kind of that vibe that the record gives you, you know, the old really classic sound, um, a lot of low enders kind of you know, tape it off and, and it's got like that crackling sound from the record as well. So I thought I'd just bring you this kind of tip that I made. So what I did here, I'll just show you how I made this sample and what it sounds like and the application that I'm using it in as well. So let me just play you the original, I guess, idea that I came up with. So this is the sample that I'm using that I created using another um, Rhodes Keys piano, which is called, uh, where is it? Velvet. Um, that's the, the actual roads that I'm using in this particular um, song that I created. So what I thought was, you know what, for all the people that use Studio One 3, I wanted to give you kind of an idea on how you can replicate this if you don't have this plugin. So the plugin I'm talking about is this one here. So let me just go into the piano here. So this is the Air Music. It's Air Music, Rhodes, Piano. And I have it set on to MK Rumi, which is just a type of velvet um instrument within this and it's i i kind of messed around with it a bit to get the classic sound that i wanted but i put some wire on it some distortion and cabinet sound so it sounds like it's really old and distorted and crackly and that all that sort of good stuff so let me just play you the actual sample that i made so you can hear what i'm talking about and then i'll show you what i did in studio one with a standard instrument within studio one and the standard plugins within studio one and one free plugin made by isotope which is called uh, vinyl um, so just so you know let me just get rid of this off here because i'm not actually using that oh man this updated thing is a pain in the ass okay anyway wait for that to do what it's going to do all right cool uh, all right so I'll just remove that in a second once it allows me to. Sweet. Okay. So here we go. Alright, so that's the sample that I created. So, you know, all I did to play that out, I played the keys out here, as you can see. Actually, I'll just make this big enough or small enough so you can see it. And that thing is so stupid. I don't know why the updater on Isotope, for some reason it spazzes out with me for some reason. And I've never been able to figure out why and I can't delete it, so whatever. Anyway, nonetheless, so these are the chords that I played out to get that exact tune so if you wanted to use similar or something in your beat that sounds similar to this this is the kind of chord structure that i used um i just played it by ear i found another beat that sounded very much like it and then i just kind of played this by ear and came up with this so excuse me just move that out of the way so basically the the way i did this so i got the Rhodes piano which is in if you go into here just type in Rhodes, and it'll bring you up all the Rhodes pianos that um, Studio One has. And I think the one that I chose, let me just double check, uh, was that a Presence XT, and I am fairly sure it's this one here. So the Rhodes Soft preset. 
So I loaded that in here just for the sake of somebody being able to use this. If they have Studio One, they can do the exact same thing I'm doing right now if you want to get that kind of sound that I'm going for, or even any other instrument for that matter, you can do that with. Um, so that's that's the one I, I used. If you want to go for another one, or by all means, go get what, whatever sound you're after. So I'll just play you the actual one that I've got that I created here in Studio One. Okay, so that's a Rhodes piano on its own. Now let me just drop in all these effects here. Okay, so I'll just show you what I did to create this whole setup. So first off, as I said, this plugin that I'm, I'm showing you right now, this is Isotope Vinyl. So Isotope Vinyl gives you that kind of crackling sound as you can hear. It's like a clicking, popping sort of sound that record players make. Um, let's turn it off so it's not doing it while I'm talking. So basically, there's a couple of settings that I played around with in this to get that kind of sound. So a lot of it is, you know, first off, getting the amount. So this is the amount dial here, and it shows you the amount and I believe it's in stereo, so you can choose which amount and how you want to use it. But um, I put scratch in at 40 dB, I put some dust on it, and then I put the amount at, I think, whoa, I think it was at 80% there. Um, and then I put this down to the year on the record, I put it down to 1950, because that was kind of like the really old record players that, that didn't have a lot of bass, and like there was hardly any low-end frequencies that, that came out, like, like you hear today at least anyway. Uh, so, so the, the low end frequencies will kind of tape it off a bit um, and it just gave you that crackly sound. So I'll just put that on, as you can hear. This gives you a bit of crackle. Now, the other thing I did, which is another plugin within Studio One. Actually, I'll just load all these up so you can see every single one of them. And um, that way, you know, in order which ones I've got going on. So I've got... This is Red Light District, which is just a distortion plugin. Basically, you use it as a distortion plugin. And um, I, I sort of dialed in some of the distortion, but then I turned down the output just a bit because, you know, it was it was too loud with all the distortion that it was, you know, with it on there. So I'll just play it with the distortion and then without it. As you can hear, it kind of adds a bit of grit to the sound, and that's the kind of record grittiness that you get when you hear a record if you've heard one before in the past. And then the final thing that I did was I turned the entire thing all the way down to mono. And I did this for one reason, because there's one thing I do later on, usually within a mix, is I'll create my own reverb sends, so I'll get this sound and I'll send it into a reverb so I can get a wider a width sound if I wanted to. But for the initial sound, I didn't want it to be all phasey and width-wise. Like, I wanted it to be really narrow, so I took the width down on it completely. I mean, you can turn it down, just put mono if you wanted to, and that's basically doing the same thing. I mean, you could... You can make it wide if you want. You can you can do whatever whatever suits your mix. It's up to you how you want to do that. But personally, I like it mono just so I can have the sound controlled at the end when I send my stuff to a reverb send, and then I'll create the width. If if I decide against that and I decide no, actually I'll use the width, then this is a good plugin to do that. So just so you know, the binary pan it gives you gives you width, or it can change it completely mono, however you want it to be, or to the left, to the right, center, however you want it. So. This is just a quick tip on how to get your stuff to sound like that old classic record sound. And then I'll just play it in with the drums that I've just started to create here just so you can hear the full kind of thing that's going on right now. So let me just mute this other old one that I've got. Just give me a sec. All right, let's play this and see how it sounds.
So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it, it's taught you something and I hope you get a lot out of it. And from be- making your own beats and, you know, progressing in your own style, I hope this, you know, gives you ideas to, to sort of go with. So all good. And uh, next time I'll see you guys here. I hope you guys subscribe and also give me a thumbs up because, you know, it really helps me out with this channel. And that's why, like I said, I keep doing these videos because people are subscribing now and it seems to be really beneficial for people. So what's going on all y'all and hope this is all good. Peace.